Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. So in the series, the next question that we are going to see is this, which is element with left side smaller and right side greater. So this question says that given an unsorted array of n size n, find the first element in, in the array such that all of its left elements are smaller and all the right elements are, uh, are to it are greater than it. Now before getting in the with the question, uh, to all the people who see my video and they like my videos, please do subscribe to my channel. Uh, in case if you want short notes for all the things that I upload, you can go and follow me in my Instagram account. I upload short notes over there. Also, I upload all the codes on my GitHub handle, so you can go and follow me there as well. And uh, if you want me to solve any particular question of yours, feel free to leave it down in the comment section with hashtag code my question. Okay, so now let's start with the question. So according to the question, we have to find the first element in the array to which all the numbers occurring to its left are, e are, small, are either smaller or equal to that particular number and all the elements occurring to its right are greater than or equal to the number. So let's see how we can do. So if, if we talk about this example, so if we just look at this number, so this is 7 and all the numbers that are towards its left are either smaller than 7 or equal to 7. And if we see all the numbers to its right, so either they are greater than 7 or they are equal to. So in this case, we don't have any equal to, but even if we had a 7 over here, so it would have worked. So now let's talk about all the possible ways or, or different ways using which we can solve this particular question. Now another point that we have to note over here is that we have to just find the first element in the array. Now this is, uh, this is a very simple approach. What I'm going to do is I'll tell you how to find all such elements. And then uh, if you want to write the code for this, you can just stop the code in the middle once you get the first element. So the very first naive approach which comes to your mind is that you can assume and uh, you can just assume that okay let's suppose if this element is our required uh, required element which has all the numbers to its left as, as smaller than or equal to that particular number and all the numbers to its right are either greater than or equal to that number. So I'm going to set my pointer over here and I'm going to check for all the numbers on both the side that if our condition is true or not. So if I see for this on so left hand side we have no other number. So the condition is true and if we see for right hand side so we see that one violates a rule. So this clearly says that two doesn't, uh, doesn't qualify our condition. So next we are going to move to 4. Now uh, when, when, we like, when we check for the left hand side, so the left hand side condition is true. But when we see on the right hand side, so 3 violates the condition and hence this is not correct. So even 4 doesn't qualify as the rule and we go to next. Now if we uh, go for 1, we, we find that okay this is not correct. On the left hand side it has numbers greater than 1, so hence we go to 3. Similar for 3, 4 is greater than 3, hence this is, this is also not our required answer. Then we go for 5. Now if we look for 5, on the left hand side we have all the numbers less than 5. And if we check on the right, we have all the numbers either greater than or equal to 5. So okay this is our one possible answer. So if you are to find out the first uh, first element only, so you can just, uh, once you just get it, you can just return your answer and, and just stop the code there itself. And if you if you are to find all such numbers, so you can just simply print this, uh, print, either print this number or if you want to send it back as a uh, list of uh, numbers, so you can just add it to your uh, list. Now we go to the next element, we go to 7. So now when we go to 7, we are going to check on the left hand side. So the left hand side condition is true. But when we check on the right hand side, so 5 violates the condition. Now the next element we are going to check is 5. So for 5, this 7 violates the condition. So hence we go to 7. Now when we go to this 7, so we see that okay, the left and the right condition both are true. And hence, after this element, this is also our correct element. Now once we go to the next element, we go to 11, we check over here, so we find that okay the left condition is true, but the right condition is, B, is false because we have 8. So we go to 8, now we go to 8, now we see the left condition is not true because of this 11 and then we're going forward. And this is how we can simply do this question. Now let's talk about the time complexity. Now see we are going to have two loops, the outer loop will tell 
our pointer it, it will just set the pointer at uh, for for which we have to check if that particular element belongs to our answer or not and in the and in the inner loop we are going to check for check that if uh, that particular pointer is our uh, belongs to our answer or not so basically this will be of order of n and this is also going to traverse whole array so this will be of uh, order of n time complexity and we are not using any extra stack space or auxiliary space so it will be of order of one space so this is not a very good approach so let's see how we can optimize it further so instead of putting instead of just uh, randomly and just uh, the, instead of just using this brute force uh, method that we where we are checking everything all over again what we can just, what we can do is we can just first simply analyze what the question wants so the, so what a question wants is that the left hand side should be less than or equal to and the right hand side should be greater than or equal to so we can just simply just convert this thing as if the min if the maximum element on the left hand side is less than or equal to my current number and the minimum element on right hand side if this is greater than or equal to our current number so this number uh, passes or qualifies our condition and belongs to our answer so what we can do is instead of just traveling again and again the whole array we can just simply have a minimum left and a maximum uh, sorry a maximum left and a minimum right array so okay so basically we will be having two arrays one is for the maximum left and one is for the minimum right so let's just okay so if this is for our maximum left and if this is for a minimum right so let's see how we're going to find them so we know that if we have some numbers and then we have a number suppose e and then we have a number suppose f so if the maximum of these numbers is m so the left max for this e will be m but the left max for this f will be maximum of m and e so if we just talk about the first element so there are no numbers to its left so we are simply going to add that element itself over here and now when we go to 4 so we, we are going to check maximum of 2 and 2 which are, which comes out to be 2 then we go to 1 so maximum of 4 and 2 is 4 then we go to 3 the maximum of 1 and 4 is 4 then we go to 5 we have maximum of 3 and 4 as 3 when you go to 7 the maximum of 5 and 4 is 5 then you go to 5 the maximum is 7 then we go to 7 the maximum is 7 for 11 it will be 7 again for 8 it will be 11 for 12 it will be 11 and for 14 it will be 12 now let's talk about minimum right so we are going to move in this direction so for 14 it will be 14 itself as it has no uh, elements on the right and we are adding 14 and in the left hand side we had it too because the condition says that the number on the left hand side can be either less than or equal to and on the right hand side it can be right uh, greater than or equal to so we are just simply adding the equals to number over here so that it, it simply passes the condition okay so now when so first we were at 14 we added 14 then we are at 12 so we are going to add minimum of 14 and 14 because over here we have to find the minimum right element so over here we have 14 then we go to 8 we have 12 then we go to 11 we have 8 when you go to 7 we have 8 then for 5 we have 7 for 7 we have 5 for 5 we have 5 then you go to 3 we have 5 again then you go to 1 we have 3 for 4 we have 1 and for 2 we have 1 so we have got our maximum left and our minimum right now all we have to do is we have to just simply go to our target number like suppose 2 and we have to see if the maximum left and minimum right conditions are true or not so if i talk about 2 so the maximum left should be less than or equals to 2 and the minimum right should be greater than or equal to 2 so 2 is less than equals to 2 correct but 1 is not greater than equals to 2 so this is not our correct answer so we go to 4 now when we go to 4 so we find 2 
and 4 over here. So we find over here this is 1. So we find 2 and 1 over here. So 2 satisfies the condition but 1 doesn't. So we go to 1 then for 1 4 is not satisfying the condition. So this is not a scenario then we go to 3. For 3 4 is not satisfying the condition. So we go to 5. Now when we go to 5 so the maximum left is 4 which satisfies the condition as it is less than equals to 5 and the maximum right also satisfies the condition and the minimum right also satisfies the condition as this is equivalent to 5. So over here we can just simply say that okay this is our one of the correct answers and similarly we can do for rest of the elements. So over here you can see that the complexity has decreased very much. So over here the total time if we talk about time complexity so the time complexity will be order of uh, if you just talk about the exact time complexity so it will be n plus n plus n which is order of n and the space complexity will be uh, two times n because n for this and n for this that is order of n so this is much much better than the previous one but we can still optimize it a little the optimization will be not uh, when we just talk about the complexities so it will not uh, exactly reflect in the uh, our uh, asymptotic time complexities but uh, when we talk about the mathematical time complexity so it will be uh, a difference a lot so let's see what we can do is now see over here we saw that first we had a, we traversed for the maximum left and then we traversed for minimum right. But if you look at the question carefully there is no need to travel for this minimum right. Now I would like you to pause the video and just give a thought about it that how we can do this and then resume the video. So okay when we talk about that we are we are there is no need of traversing this array what we can do is that instead of having uh, first traversing for this then this and then actually traversing the uh, whole array to get the answer we what we can do is we can just merge these two which is the minimum right and the traversal to get the element into one uh, one traversal only what we can do is we can just traverse from over here we go to 14 and we just simply write 14 over here because it has no right elements and at the same point of time we can check if this condition is also true or not. So what we can do is we can just simply do this and this is the point at uh, the point itself you can find that this particular number which is 14 is one of our answers or not. In this case it is but you have to make sure now now one thing that you have to make sure that when you are finding all the numbers that uh, that satisfies this condition so this is a perfect answer we, you can just simply go through all the numbers and you can see if these conditions are true or not but when you have to find the first element only so in that condition what you can do is in that condition in order to get the number it is necessary to go from left to right so instead of first finding max left just find max right uh, instead of uh, just find minimum right first and then while you are calculating max left check for the minimum right at the same time. So this is going to spare, uh, save uh, some, uh, a one traversal and one array length uh, when it comes to our complexity. So the time complexity will be same will be still still same which is order of n time complexity and order of space complexity but this is a li little optimization that you can do. So this is how you can solve the question and uh, if you want the if you want the course this codes to this, this question you can you, I'll just leave the link in the description box you can go to my github account and you can get all the codes over there.